Hi there, this is Dr. Keith speaking uh, with a new video and a new type of video for Guru Express and this is in the New Thought Horizons series. I thought I'd talk to you about better communication. Uh, you will remember me saying in one of those talks just how important good communication is. Uh, well, you know, you can never learn too much about good communication. This also, by the way, impinges a little bit on the theme of the gentle person's guide to good behavior. You may remember that too from the recordings that I did. Okay, so let's say this first. If you've got a problem, communication becomes the number one solution. It's the one important thing that you have to do. You need to find the information that you need to get the full picture and usually when you can see it all a solution becomes very simple and very apparent. It could be said that really in a sense a, a problem is just an incomplete communication. If you can find the correct incomplete communication and complete it then the problem would typically resolve. Now, if somebody doesn't actually understand or agree with you, that's not a big problem in life, providing that you go around, providing you go about things the right way. And it's important to clarify your own communication, what it is that you're seeking to put across, by asking clarifying and extending questions. So, if, for example, somebody says that they weren't very happy with the way you behaved last night, You've got to clarify what they mean. What, well, what exactly do you mean by that? What behavior are you talking about? What did I do that you found so offensive? And when the person answers, you might want to ask extending questions like, well, why is that such a big deal? I mean, we were all having a good time at the party, far too much to drink, and people were letting their hair down. I don't see that I was different to anybody else. What... What is it exactly about that? Is it that disturbed you? And so on. Do you see, try to get the other person's viewpoint and try and get them to share your viewpoint. And you'll usually find that the issues, the problem, as it were, will, will start to resolve. But it's, a, it's very important, as I said, to communicate, to get the information you need. Usually a full information picture is all that it takes. Now, also, if you're upset, you need to communicate how you feel and what it is that you find frustrating. It's not a sin to be upset. Usually it's a waste of time. But, you know, if there is something that bugs you or that you find frustrating, that's fine. You're entitled to say how you feel, providing that you're not nasty about things. If you feel that your rights are being trampled on, then say so. Say it nicely, but, you know, be firm that certain things are not acceptable and say that and of course the reverse of that applies to you too you've got to be honest you know and if you've done something that's invasive in somebody else's territory then you need to recognize that you did wrong and be willing to communicate that and say that you recognize you did wrong and apologize for it It's important to keep your nerve, to not back off, to have the courage to say and communicate the things that that do matter, the things that are important, the things that can ultimately resolve the situation. So even if you feel very nervous or uncomfortable, you should do, as the old saying says, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway, or in this case, feel the fear and say it anyway. Usually you'll be glad that you did. The important point is getting across what it is that you want to be known and understood. Don't allow yourself to be fobbed off. As I said, you don't need to get nasty about it, but you may need to be persistent or repeat what you're trying to say in different ways until you feel that the other person has got it. And then you're entitled to obtain a, a, a valid response, you know, not be ignored, that the person must come back to you with their point of view. Otherwise, nothing's going to resolve. You know, if you get a situation of somebody saying, I don't want to talk to you, then obviously nothing is ever going to resolve and you're dealing with a very infantile and difficult person. But you must persist in getting your response, a valid response, while, you know, re remaining polite and also keeping a positive tone. Don't retaliate with negative emotions. That's very important. 
Now, I could probably add some of these points that I'm going to go through now to the gentle person's guide to good behavior. I could probably, in a way, fuse the two lists. I probably will do that sometime. But anyway, let's take a look at this now. First of all, any one of us is entitled to say no to a request. If it's not right for us, it's not suitable, we don't want to do it, there's some good reason why we shouldn't do it. Even, listen, even if there isn't a good reason, uh, you're entitled to say no. And you're entitled to say it without being without somebody coming back at you with rudeness, trying to make you feel guilty or insulting you in any way. It's a right. We have an entitlement to say no if we wish. We have an entitlement not to give reasons for everything that we do. Sometimes it makes sense to explain to the people that we live with what we're thinking and why we're thinking it and why we did what we did. But you know, they can't force you to do that. And often a person can be very intrusive and in making demands, you know, why did you do that? What right do you have to do that? And who do you think you are? And so on. We're entitled to not give the reasons if we don't wish to. So defend your space if you need to. Okay. Now we have a right to stop others from making excessive demands on us. If you live with a person like this, you know how difficult it can be when Everything they want is for them. They don't consider other people. Uh, they are, again, quite often childish or immature people. Uh, they, all they ever see is their own point of view and what they want. Well, you know, we're entitled to not play that game. If they want to try the game, that's fine. But we don't have to play with them. We can just say, no, I'm, I'm not going there. I don't want this and I'm not doing this. And this is the fourth time you've asked me today. Please don't ask me again. Otherwise, the answer is exactly the same anyway. We have a right, and remember it's a right or an entitlement, to ask other people to listen to our point of view when we speak to them. It's an entitlement and it's something that you should insist on. Of course you need to grant them the same courtesy, you need to be willing to listen to them, otherwise there's no meaningful communication taking place anyway. We also have the right to ask people to correct any errors that they make if they affect us. For example, somebody parks the car in the wrong place so that you can't get your vehicle out. You're perfectly entitled to walk up to them and say, please move the car, I can't get my vehicle out and please do it now because I need to go, I've got an appointment. Remember that person committed the error, not you, so you're entitled to demand that they correct it. Again, just do it nicely but firmly. Now, we have a right to change our minds if we wish. This might seem obvious. I mean, the ladies might, you know, women are famous for changing their minds. But hey, this is not a gender thing. Anyone can change their minds. And that can be respected. Not very long ago, I changed my mind about, I'd, I'd made an undertaking to go to, uh, to a particular place with someone. And I changed my mind and explained that I didn't want to go after all. This person called me a liar. She said, you lied, you said you'd come. And I said, no, I didn't lie. I, I intended to at the time, but I have changed my mind. Please respect the fact that I no longer wish to do that. We've got a right to ask people to compromise, to meet us halfway. It can be impossible living with people who only ever want to get what they want. They have to have it. They have to have it in full. It doesn't matter what it costs you and they give you nothing. It's just what they want. Them, them, them all the time. Well, that's not a right. You know, no one has that right, but we have the right to share and that often means compromise. So there's some give and take. We give some, they give some and it makes that makes the machinery run smoothly. We've got a right to ask other things, other people to do things for us. Only ask, okay, we don't have a right to insist that they do, but we're entitled to say that, for goodness sake. If you want help putting up the curtains or making the bed, it's perfectly fine to ask the person. They have an entitlement to say no if they wish. But, you know, again, it comes back to the compromise idea. You know, if, <laughs> if it's a bedroom you share, then you have to share some of the chores. And uh, it's no good one person insisting on their right to say no if it means their partner or spouse 
ends up being the only one that does any housework or ever makes the beds or dust the shelves that wouldn't that wouldn't work would it but uh, so as i say we have a right to ask people have a right to say no but that right should be exercised with love and with care now we also have a right to when we're requesting something from people uh, we can repeat our request if they won't do it for the first time. If they won't respond, ask again. And it's no good them being irritated and saying, why do you keep asking that? The answer is because you're not responding. So, you know, you need to make that pretty clear to the person uh, that if they don't respond, then you're going to p persist. So uh, just avoiding you or ducking the issue is not going to solve anything. You'll just come again and again. Always be polite, but nevertheless, you have an entitlement to persist until you get a valid response. Okay, we jumped a bullet, as you saw, but we have a right to be alone if we wish. And it's a very precious right for some of us. You know, sometimes we need a bit of space, we need time to think. Uh, and people that we're with and people that say they love us sometimes don't respect that. You know, they intrude, they burst in the room if you've asked them to leave you alone for a while doesn't suit them so they just come and invade your space anyway well you must insist on this entitlement to be alone at times if you wish it can be as i said very important to us of course it can't be carried to extremes if you say i never want to see you again i never want to talk to you again that's not being alone that's really very very destructive that's not the kind of thing i'm talking about I'm talking about a few hours not months or years or the rest of your life <laughs> okay we have a right to maintain our dignity in relationships. We often wish we hadn't done things and, you know, nothing is ever smooth. The measure of a good marriage or a good relationship isn't that it's smooth, it's that people can figure it out and repair things pretty quickly and the damage isn't permanent and lasting. But, you know, if we do things that are goofy, we still are entitled to maintain our dignity. We should not expect to be scoffed and sneered at and laughed at and made fun of and made fools of by those around us uh, that shouldn't be because of course they're not so perfect either people often forget that when they're being scornful and derisory we do have a right to evaluate our own behavior that that is judge our own behaviors we 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 don't need to be forced to listen to other people's opinions and judgments and they're not entitled to share them with us forcefully. We are entitled to ignore them. That's a right, I believe. You're not entitled to go and be nasty to people and be judgmental about what they're doing. So uh, defend your space and make your own judgments about what you do. If you feel it's right for you, it really doesn't matter who else is trying to make you wrong or make you guilty for doing that, okay? Uh, in the same vein, I'm really saying we can make mistakes. We're entitled. We have the right to make mistakes. God, nobody is perfect. Uh, we need to accept responsibility for them. And, and as I said, not be made fools for it. We, oh, okay, we did something wrong. Well, let's fix it. It's no big deal. Uh, and not to suffer scorn or a derisory opinion because of that. We have an entitlement to in avoid manipulation by other people. There are individuals out there, as you know, that are extremely tricky and manipulative and cunning. They want to play that game. You don't have to play it, okay? You can avoid it and you can tell them that you see the game and you're not playing the game. Just don't go along with it. Uh, they're not entitled to manipulate you or the circumstances around you. Tell them so and make sure that they don't succeed at what they're trying to do. You have a right to pick your own friends, the people that you want to be with. You choose who's important to you without needing to consult others such as your parents or peers or fellow employees or anyone else. It's, it's your deal. It's, they're your friends. You pick them and you pick them for your own reasons and not because others approve or disapprove. We have a right to let other people know how we're feeling. That doesn't mean we have a right to scream and shout and rant and create a scene. But we do have a right to say to someone, I feel very frustrated or I feel very angry about this situation. That doesn't mean you shout at them and start yelling, you lousy so-and-so, like an angry person would. But you can tell them that you're feeling angry without being angry at them. Tell them you're angry or tell them that you're sad or tell them that you're afraid. Other people, if they're good people that you're surrounding yourself with in your life, 
should be uh, sensitive to that and they should respect your feelings and care about how you feel. But as I said, it doesn't entitle you to colour the communication with the unpleasantness of the particular emotion that you're feeling. Okay, now let's turn this around, okay? When you're speaking with others and you're criticising them, offering criticism, okay? We have to be careful of this word. It's often perceived as a negative word. But criticising just means we're saying something isn't the way that we'd like it to be. Be careful, but nevertheless, you're entitled to do it. But you should avoid all acrimony. Don't be nasty. Just be polite about it and explain what it is that you don't like and what it is that you would prefer to be corrected. You need to make your comments specific, and this is very important. You mustn't say to people, you're just a lousy, selfish jerk, everybody hates you and all that sort of vague generalization stuff, uh, be specific. Say, I don't like the way that you forgot my birthday and didn't send me a card. It makes me feel unimportant in your life. Can you see that's very specific? That's not saying to someone you're a lousy, selfish, inconsiderate jerk. It's saying, hey, you forgot my birthday, you didn't send the card in the usual way, and that makes me feel that you don't care about me very much. It doesn't seem that you do. Okay, that's specific. It's important that you try when you're criticizing people to provide them with valuable information. Let them learn something that would help the situation, particularly in the future, similar situations. Like the example I just gave, if you say to a person, well, it makes me feel unimportant and that upsets me. If this is someone you're in a relationship with, they may be it may turn them around to realize, oh, yeah, well, I guess you're right. Yes, it does. I mean, of course I value, I love you, but I, I can see now how that would make you feel unimportant in my life. The person has learned something useful and it will tend to change their behaviors, okay? And uh, in the same vein, you need to help them to understand exactly what it is that needs to change. You don't be vague about it. Some some specific thing. Give them the details of what you would like to see that's different. Help them, in other words, help them to understand how things could be better between you. Okay, now this is an important one. Be sure that the criticized behavior can be changed. If it, <laughs> the person really isn't going to be able to change it, then you can see straight away that if the person can't do anything about the problem, you're just going to make matters worse by being critical of it. Let's say, you know, you feel the person drinks too much and you want to complain about that, but the person really isn't in control. You know, maybe they're, uh, they have a drink problem and maybe they should go to Alcoholics Anonymous or something. But at that point, they're not in control of drinking. If you criticize it, you're going to make it worse. They'll probably just get angry and uh, upset with you and then go and drink more heavily because you're being nasty to them and all those kind of justifications. Uh, so do take care. <laughs> Make sure it can be changed. Now, you need to use assertive communication here. Now, I don't mean bossy or domineering or raising your voice. I mean, be firm. You know, you can't criticize from a wimpy point of view, or at least it's not going to work if you do. If you're in the sort of vein of, oh, you know, I'm terribly sorry, I'm a hopelessly unimportant person and you shouldn't really listen to me, but, you know, I've got this thing that really bugs me. If only you could take the trouble maybe to change. That ain't going to work. The person, <laughs> the person isn't going to respond to that, okay? We like to deal with people as equals, especially those in our, our spheres of influence. So just state your case perfectly straightforward. Hey, I don't like you doing that. Have you noticed that every time you do that, it upsets me? Just be as firm as that and speak in a really a politely efficient and precise business-like tone. You don't need all the emotional layers. Just be efficient. Uh, so in other words, you're not letting your emotions dictate the tone of the conversation. Say it calmly. Not as I said, not wimpily, but uh, to me, the best way to describe it is, is just polite, business like, efficient, okay? Not with too much positive emotion, not with too much negative emotion when you're, when you're criticizing somebody. It's important when you're bringing criticism to bear that you try not to use these usual human mechanisms of shame and blame and humiliation, you know, make them feel foolish or stupid or 
deride them or in some way, you know, this is way beyond what I mean by criticism. You know, the criticism, you know, you keep parking the car too far towards my side of the garage and it makes it difficult for me to get out. That's what you say. You don't say, you know, lousy, selfish person, you little two-bit nobody, who do you think you are? And all those kind of things doesn't work, okay? So you see why all this comes under the power of communication, you know, the power of positive communication. Okay, you need to give the person a positive reason to change. If you can incentivize behavior, then you're likely to get the person to do better. For example, if a, a housewife was to say to her husband, well, you know, if you helped out a little bit more with the chores, I wouldn't be so tired. I'd be much more responsive when we make love. Then anything but a, a, a dummy would respond to that and realize if he was an intelligent man that it would be smart to help out so that his wife isn't as tired and therefore they're romancing the times in bed uh, just go better so in general inform a person of any benefits that might come out of acting on your suggestions you know explain how it could be good what they stand to gain as well as what you stand to gain it's simply you know rewards and benefits versus penalties if it's there's a good reason to do it and there's a benefit from it likely as not you'll incentivize that person's behavior okay you need to time your criticisms well. And this is very important. You be very careful when you criticize a person. They need to be able to listen to you. You don't want them stressed so that they're not really paying attention. Otherwise, sometimes all that comes across is the fact that you're complaining. They're not really listening to how gently and politely you're complaining. It's just, you know, you're complaining and I'm in the middle of this stuff and how, can, how could you come on me at a, a time like this? So... Very important that you choose a good time. For example, don't pick a time when the person's sick or very tired. These are not good times to discuss difficult issues. It usually goes wrong if you do. Uh, you should also be careful where you criticize someone. Of course, we all know that it's really wrong to criticize people in front of others. You should never do it in public. Uh, because the other per you might have the right attitude, but the other person may pick up on this and take a negative view of the person. So, And also, it tends to humiliate people if you do that. So just avoid that altogether. That's a definite social no-no. Take the person aside. Uh, wait until the person's in a reasonably good mood. If you're just, you know, they're upset and frustrated and you just insist on your right to complain, it's probably going to backfire on you. It's much better to wait until the person's in a reasonably good mood I mean, you know, that hey, they don't have to be laughing and happy and over the moon, but just don't hit them when they're in a negative place or a hurting place. It's just not the right time to criticize. So, and as I said before, you should never attack, as it were, when somebody is tired or they're feeling unwell. These are particularly bad times when the defenses are down, the mind isn't functioning in the right mode. The mind is in a semi a semi-unconscious mode or the unconscious mode is too big a proportion of the person's thinking processes. It bypasses the normal consciousness defenses and so on. And this can have disastrous consequences and stir up things from much deeper that you would be far better to leave alone. Remember, whenever you're criticizing, uh, positive change should be your goal. That's what you're aiming for. And if you're uh, bright, intelligent and positive about that nobody should really infringe your right to say things that you'd like change to be critical of others behaviors we have this term don't we constructive criticism and there is such a thing though on its own the word criticism is uh, negative uh, tends to be perceived as negative but if you say constructive criticism i think we all know what we're aiming for so that's the end of what I was going to say, but it just reminded me of something. I think I'll just finish with a joke <laughs> from an old uh, an English comedian. He's long dead now, he said. But he, he would say to somebody, do you, do you mind a bit of constructive criticism? And the person would say, well, no. And he'd say, well, you're crap. <laughs> well, of course, that's not constructive criticism. That's the point of the joke. Uh, but these are valuable communication tools, and if you take the time and trouble to use them, you should find that it oils the wheels and your passage through life and your interactions with others should be a lot smoother. As I said, perhaps I, one day I'll blend these in with a gentle person's guide to good behavior, manners, in other words. All this is really, if you think about it, 
uh, about good manners as well as efficient and clean, neat communications. Thank you very much. <laughs>